So we're going over the top quarterbacks in today's uh, show, which, uh, look, Jalen Hurts is a problem for Andy, uh, but there is a huge announcement on the show as well. And most importantly, is draft week, baby. Check out today's episode. It's always a good time to avoid the hustle and bustle at the grocery store, not to mention the crowds. HelloFresh delivers everything you need to get dinner on the table directly to your door, contact free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12. Use the code FOOTBALLERS12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. We also want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode of the show. IP Vanish is a virtual private network. That's a VPN, guys, a su super, super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. What do you get with IP Vanish? You get anonymous IP addresses. That means your personal IP address cannot be tracked mm -mm. Uh, by anybody on the web. Not catching me. You can circumvent online censorship. Uh, they have more than 1,500 servers in 70-plus locations, 24-7 support. You can email them, chat with them, even call them. They're here to help. So go to ipvanish.com slash footballers. Claim your 65% savings. They have plans starting at just $349 or $31.49 a year, and this is the time to sign up. With our discount and the current promotional offerings, you can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Show these guys some love. They're repeat sponsors of the show. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. I didn't go with it because I didn't want to start the show out in a bummer. But I got it in my head. It was it's not draft time mm, because oh. it's not the NFL draft. I don't know how we're talking about anything today because I am just you're already there. I'm 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 Apple R on the uh, NFL draft website. Okay, refreshing. Yeah, just nonstop. I know it's not on yet, but the heart wants what the heart wants, and I need the draft to start from, immediately. From it's, what I understand, uh, Kyle Shanahan is out in a meadow. He picked a flower. He's he's pulling yes. the petals off. I love you. Um, I love you not. And it's, it's, there's three on this one. It's Trey Lance. It's Justin Fields. It's Matt well, Jones. We know one person who's not on it, Jimmy Garoppolo, <laughs> oh. <laughs> because – Shanahan, I mean, we're getting whatever. Welcome to the footballers. We're getting right into it. <laughs> but did you guys see the quotes of Shanahan saying, we need to find a starting quarterback in this draft? Wow. And that's why they made the move. And it's like, because you, you don't have a starting quarterback on your team. We read you, yeah. Mr. Shanahan. And when he was Loud asked, and clear. When he was asked whether or not you know he can guarantee if Jimmy Garoppolo would even be on the roster after the draft, he's like, I can't guarantee anybody will be alive. <laughs> like, what kind of answer? It, like, Jimmy Garoppolo will not. I, this this is a promise because I know that they were saying they got permission from the owner that that they can ride with Jimmy Garoppolo and have a quarterback picked, and that can be 2021. This is a promise. Jimmy Garoppolo will not be on that team in 2021. He will not play a snap or even be there for I, training camp. I, I think he could. I, I'm I'm calling it now. No chance. I think that he it, I think he could hang on and be around to be the starter. If they go Trey Lance, I mean you Which is the strongest inkling right now. Yes, i I'm yeah. If it's not Fields and the It's not gonna be Fields. It it may not be. I'm still holding out hope for Justin Fields to for for that to happen, but I mean, it just is shocking to spend that. As a draft Cardinal capital. fan, you shouldn't want that. No, I oh, I don't. Yes, but as a as a fantasy football fan, I want it to happen. But how do you? You really are convinced that Mac Jones is that much better than Jimmy Garoppolo? I don't know what he's convinced of. He, he all I know is he's what Jason said man. that they don't want Jimmy Garoppolo, which yep. I've been saying for a while that he's just he's going to go back to New England. Maybe he'll be back in New England with Bill Belichick, and it'll be. Like that trade never happened. Oh, man. I love this time of that's year. Why, that's why it sucks. Why this is the draft week, man. We need draft. 
Speaking of draft week, and we are we're actually talking through our top twenty early quarterback rankings on today's show, with probably draft comments just all throughout. Thursday is predictions, so we'll do predictions for the NFL draft on the episode before the NFL draft round one that night. But I am here to announce that Horn <laughs> is here to announce the ultimate draft week. I told you we had some very special things planned for this week. And Ultimate Draft Week is officially here. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> this week only, you need to pick up the Ultimate Draft Kit or the UDK Plus because if you, if you get it, which you know you're going to do eventually, if you get it before the end of the NFL Draft, you're getting the cheapest possible price. Cheapest price, and you are entered to win the Ultimate Draft Week prize pack. Here's what is inside of that spectacular package uh listener league entry we're giving away another spot to the footballers listener league we're also giving away a video draft review with the three of us you're going to hop on we're going to talk through your team your picks oh we're going to cut it up yeah and, and we're going to be brutally honest yes so good, draft good draft time. well last year yeah. uh we we did this and uh, they, they had a good draft yeah probably because they had the ultimate draft. that's yeah. right we're also giving away a signed Devonte adams jersey and he signed Clyde Edwards Alaire jersey. This all goes to one super lucky person. And if you already got the ultimate draft kit because you, you know you're on top of things, you got it in the past, you are eligible here. Yep. It's just anyone who has gotten it before the end of the NFL draft. It goes through Sunday. So look, if you and if you haven't ever got the ultimate draft kit, and you're like, ah, maybe you know, maybe this is the year I want to. I don't know, win my championship. Um, then <laughs> this is the time to do it because. This is nuts. Devontae Adams jersey, Clyde Edwards Alaire jersey, listener league spot. So if you want to grab that, ultimatedraftkit.com. Head over there and we will uh give those sweet, sweet items away, including that listener league spot very, very soon. What else is part Best of Ultimate wait. Draft Week? Hold on, let me take another deep breath. Oh, what's the uh Oh, one more thing. There is one more thing. Yeah. Uh Friday, day two of the NFL draft. We are back with the footballers live stream. We will bring you our NFL round one reactions. We will be uh, right before rounds two and three begin that night. This is Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, ballerslive.com. And uh, that, that was so much fun last year, and we're going to do it again. Uh, do you guys have the con contingency plan for if Washington does, in fact, draft Travis yeah. Etienne? We are yeah. going to move Brooks right into your okay, seat. Okay, perfect. And I, then just, we'll, I, I want the listeners taken care of. That's right. And we do have... Um, the, the hearse will be standing by Thank if you. needed uh, to just take you right off. I want to look good. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do you nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, that's ballerslive.com. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. It'll be on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, everywhere that people watch people do things live. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been called that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a busy week. It's going to be fun. Uh, news time. News and notes from around the league. All right. Big move. Orlando Brown. Mm -hmm. Star. Pro bowler. Tackle from the Ravens. Now a Kansas City Chief. Kansas City got Orlando Brown. A second round pick in this year's draft and a sixth next year. And they gave up a first round pick, a third round pick, and a fourth round pick this year. It's really not that bad. You move from the first back a few spots into the second round. I mean And this what, was strategic from the Baltimore side. They had Ronnie Stanley coming back. It's and it, Orlando Brown did not want to play right tackle. Yeah, he he requested the trade. Uh Orlando Brown did. And and when that happened, teams reached out. But it's it's great to see for the Kansas City Chiefs. We're, we're obviously gonna be talking about Pat Mahomes is just a second here, but what we saw in the Super Bowl was, oh my goodness, yes. we need to fix this offensive line, um, and you know it got really concerning even following the the Super Bowl with all the releases. But they've done a great job rebuilding the offensive line. It's it's good news for for fantasy football. All right, uh, Baker Mayfield, fifth year option has been exercised. Smart, I would do it, <laughs> and. Uh, the team is going to wait. The Panthers are going to wait until after the draft to make a decision on Sam Darnold's fifth-year option. They have to see if Justin Fields is available when they're picking. Yeah. 
I they'd be smart to hedge, draft him to hedge. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that's all the news we have, Brooks. Are you excited, Brooks, about the ultimate draft week coming up? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's that, good. That was max excitement. It was. That was peaked out. All right. Well, this is. Uh, I mean, that's post lunch too, Brooks. That's how excited he is. All right. No other news. You guys ready to talk quarterbacks? Let's go. Quarterbacks. All right, our early quarterback rankings. If you missed wide receivers, running backs, uh, we did those on the previous few shows, so you can check them out. Everything's going to change soon, or not everything, but a lot. Yes. Depth charts are going to change, opportunities. I'm guessing Atlanta will have more running backs at the end of uh, the next few days than they have right now with Mike Davis. I've been warming on Mike Davis. Uh-oh. I'm Well, just it, like – I know that okay. we just All right. started getting into quarterbacks here, but yeah, let's, let's go. I'm just like you feel like a like a hen, and I, you're just like sitting on him. Three weeks him ago, up. three weeks ago, the idea of Mike Davis being the starter was an outlandish impossibility to me. Like that just wouldn't happen because why would an NFL team do that? Mm -hmm. um, now I'm starting to realize like there's a good chance he's the starter. Even no if chance. they even, no even if they draft you know uh, another running back, but if they don't get one of those main three guys, I mean maybe maybe throw Trey Sermon in the mix, but if they don't get one of them, Mike Davis is the starter. I mean no no other running back is going to. So what you're saying is if they don't add more running backs to this roster, he will be the starter. I'm saying specifically if they can't walk away with one of those four people, those four human beings, it's a finite resource, then he'll be the starter. He won't be alone. Agreed. So they'll add, even if it's not one of those four, they'll add a free agent. They'll add probably a rookie and a free agent. I don't think any team thinks that they're going to go into the year with Mike Davis as their only guy. Go no, ahead. but he, Jason's right. If they don't get one of those four players, the chance of Mike Davis being a starting running back for a very high-powered offense has gone up tremendously. Todd Gurley is still available. <laughs> that sentence will oh, probably no. be, be sad forever. Yeah, oh, for a Todd. while. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, he got paid, right? I mean, he made some yes, money. Yes, he did. He made some money. All right, we are into our early quarterback rankings. A heads up, before we get into it, you're not going to hear Deshaun Watson's name because we honestly do not know what's going on with Deshaun Watson. We don't nope. know if he will play. We don't know if he'll be suspended for the entire year. We don't know if he'll ever play football again. Uh, and so for fantasy purposes, it would be a shot in the dark to rank him. So we're not going to do it yet. We're not going to presume that he's back too much unclear there and then the same goes with the saints quarterbacks we don't know who's the quarterback so they didn't they didn't crack the top 15 because we don't know who's going to be behind center i don't know if you guys saw the clip of Taysom hill talking about his workouts i did not uh you know because everything is news but they were asking him at a golf course about you know this offseason how's it different and he was saying well every previous offseason all his workouts have been built around this you know Jack of all trades, uh, weapon on the field type of workouts. He said everything this offseason is it's the quarterback. It's, co it's to be the full time quarterback. All his workouts are full time quarterback workouts. But did, so he's, that's good. I mean, what does that look like for him though? Is he just? I, yeah, I stopped all my strength training. I just do the arm now. <laughs> like, I, don't I don't know what that means. Well, yeah, because either way, you're probably a lot to do as a tight end though. He's you the, know that he's well, not doing, but he's either the starter or he's the clear backup. Where last year it was, you didn't know he, you could do that with Taysom Hill because you had Jameis if Taysom Hill were to miss some time. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. For you guys. Yes. Yes. Jason and I both have Patrick Mahomes at one. Mike has him at two. That's right. How's that chalk taste, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. It's so lame. <laughs> Very nice. Patrick Mahomes at one. Patrick Mahomes at one. I know. I know. Cowardice. It's such a ridiculous uh, decision here. He's been a quarterback one in 75% of his starts since 2018, which is a while. Uh, the reason Patrick Mahomes is at one, he finished at QB four last year. He's not a guarantee to finish at one. The reason that I rank my quarterbacks like this, which I assume is Jason's reason, is you have the highest probability of being at that position on a weekly basis when you've shown sustained success over time. Last year, Lamar Jackson went number one in a lot of drafts. He finished at QB 10 variability matters. And, and it's very rare. I think it's 2012 since a quarterback repeated at number one. 
So you're talking almost 10 years. So it's not likely that somebody's going to repeat that you can just put last year's rankings down as this year's rankings. And so that's why Mahomes is where he's at. He's just too consistent, too good at the position. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we need to explain this. He's the best quarterback in the league, period. And he does enough offensively with Andy Reid to translate to fantasy success. He's, he, you know, outside of Mike, he is everybody's quarterback one. But I also understand the argument here for the next quarterback if we're we're good to move past Mahomes, yep. right? I mean, yep. uh, we are. Although I'll, I'll note that his offensive line has improved. You know, mm -hmm. it, when all is said and done, they they did work there, and they're going to protect him. And if he's on his feet, he's got the weapons to do what he's been doing. They did lose Sammy Watkins though, so oh, that's going to be gosh. real hard on Patrick. Yeah, that's um. Oh. <laughs> Kyler Murray at number two, which yep. yeah for you guys. Mike has him at one. How's that fire taste, Mike? That's right. Oh, it's hot. It's spicy. Uh, that's what the people are here for. Now I am a little hot surprised takes. that we both, Jason and I, we both have him at two. Like that's not chalk to have Kyler Murray at, at one or two. I, I, yeah, I mean he's obviously I've up seen in him the mix. At four, five. I think there is generally speaking four quarterbacks that are usually the first four to go and and they can go in any order obviously uh, you know the other three are much much better running quarterbacks than Patrick Mahomes and that I assume is why you have him number one is because of that rushing baseline yeah yeah you you saw so Kyler Murray 13th in passing yards second in, in rushing yards and this is the this is the time of the year like remember what happened last year Kyler Murray was scorching the earth the way that Lamar Jackson did Two years ago. QB uh, one from weeks one through 16. And he got hurt in week 11. And you saw a, like a massive drop in his production. Uh, I mean, he was, he was the QB four against Philadelphia in week 15 after the week 11 injury. But other than that, he was the QB 14 or worse. He saw his rushing yards drop in half per game. He went from 67 rushing yards down to 30 as he tried to protect himself and he wasn't uh, running nearly as much, and his just his touchdown pace dropped by nearly ten touchdowns on a on a per season average. So I I believe that Kyler Murray will be the number one guy. It I mean like we're we're presuming health here, but so I'm going I'm saying okay in a vacuum if Kyler plays all seventeen and is healthy, I think he'll be the number one guy. Yeah, I I, I think that you could very well be right. Kyler came out talking about his shoulder injury recently saying if you go watch my college tape and see how I throw and you look at the end of last year his throwing motion was different because of the hurt shoulder he wasn't trying to make excuses but that was the reality that was true and I wonder you, why he didn't reference the early part of the year throws why do you reference his college yeah, tape right yeah I mean here's here's just just one of those remember remember what happens here is his weekly fantasy finish up until uh, that week 11, he was the quarterback 5, 5, 7, 11, 5, 5, 2, 1, 2, 11. Never finishing outside of a quarterback 1. And then the shoulder injury, he was 26, 19, 14, 4, 20, and 34. Like, he was not, he, yeah, he was was not the same. A.J. Green added to the yeah, roster. That, that's going to hurt, but I think he can <laughs> overcome with the legs. <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald may retire. It looks uh, that way. Dan Arnold will be gone. Kenyon Drake is gone. So it doesn't matter. It's hot. He only had Hopkins last year in reality. And and Christian Kirk dealt with his own injuries, and, and he should be back and hopefully move to the slot. Okay. So that's Kyler. Number three. Oh, excellent. J Number three is uh, Josh Joshua Allen. The stallion himself. Why isn't he riding his horse? Because I can't guitar? find it. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, excellent. Uh, he was the quarterback one last year. Josh Allen was. Yep. Now, you talk about you talked about rushing quarterbacks, Jason. Mind you, Josh Allen only outperformed Patrick Mahomes with 120 yards on the ground. It's the touchdowns mm -hmm. on the ground that Josh Allen uh, made the difference with. It wasn't yardage. He had eight rushing touchdowns on top of a, a banner year, you know, throwing the football, something we – you know, even in our wildest dreams, probably didn't think it would get this good for Josh Allen. 45 total touchdowns, 16 more than his previous career high. Mind you, it's a short career there, but this was a breakout year for Josh Allen. I have him at five. 
Um, that's pretty mean. Yeah. yeah. When I when I that's previously spoke of the, he's my dynasty quarterback too. So that's when I that's when, not nice defending when, champ. When I was talking about the four that usually go in the top four, he was one of them. So the, him being in your top five would be pretty low for for Josh Allen, last year's quarterback number one. Yeah. And that's just variability. I think, you know, he had a one of those years. Nobody can see things going sideways the year after an MVP season, but they always do. Yeah. Oh, I, and, I, and I mean always. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I do agree with you. You know, there's been a lot of conversation of, like, who would you rather have, Josh Allen or Kyler? And I continuously say Kyler because what happened last year was room to improve for Kyler and was, I think, the ceiling for Josh Allen. Not to say he can't ever repeat what he did last year. He's young. It was that breakout. But he's not going to throw for more than 4,500 and, you know, have more than 46 total touchdowns. Like, that is... Well, he might. There's an extra game. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, yeah, I got, got you got again. Uh, oh, that's going to be fun this offseason. <laughs> but, like, that, what he did this last year is his career peak... And even if he does it three, four, five more times before the end, whereas the only where to, the only other place to go is down, in my opinion, for Josh Allen. It's really not, you know, we have to put him in an order. This is the order it ended up in. Uh, and I mean that in the sense that, like, it's a very, very narrow window. These are elite quarterbacks that I'm going to be drafting based on ADP not based on how this exact ranking pans out. Does that make sense? Well, let's talk about these three then with where you'll draft them in a draft. Where so uh, Do you, you have know, ADP for me, or are you just making me do all the work? I'm saying what round do you usually look and say, okay, Patrick Mahomes is on the board. I'm willing to third take round. him in the, the third. Yes. Kyler is on the board. I'm willing to pull the trigger and take him fourth. in the fourth. Okay, and then Josh Allen, where would you be willing to take Josh Allen? Fifth round. So it's just third, fourth, fifth with yes. those three guys. Okay. That's easy. Can I, get, can I get a sixth round? A sixth round quarterback? Yeah. We'll talk about him next. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. Uh, before we do that, moving to the rest of the quarterbacks, I want to thank today's sponsor, Away. Away is a modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler and every kind of trip. They started with the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make travel more seamless. We told, I we love told, my Away bags. We told Brooks. We said, get away. Yes. And he, and he, he did. And he got a sweet bag. Ladies and gentlemen, traveling is it's coming back. It is on the way. And when you're doing it, you, you, you want to look good while you're doing it. You got to have the style of a way. And you got to have uh, the utility as well. All of Away's suitcases are designed to last a lifetime with durable exteriors that can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers. Four 360 degree spinner wheels guarantee the smoothest roll. This sounds. Like when when I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, but I've experienced the wheels on the away bag, and everyone else is just like, your bag goes exactly where you want it to mm -hmm. go. You are not fighting, tripping out. The bag's falling on you. Oh, it, what's that carpet? Yeah, no, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Uh, they like I said, they last for a lifetime, and there's a hundred day trial on everything away makes. You can take the product out on the road, live with it, travel with it, even get lost with it for 100 days. If you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. No ifs, ands, or buts. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases, at awaytravel.com slash footballers. That's awaytravel.com slash footballers. And we also want to thank First Leaf, uh, First Leaf is a fully customizable wine club that sends you curated boxes of wine that are perfect for you. Because we've all we've all been there. We've all been staring at the wine aisle, going, "Okay." Uh, uh. Here, here's the truth. I mean, I was just talking about this on the Spitballers podcast about like wine. Not all wine is worth it. It's right. not all. Some wine is good. Some wine is not good. And and it's obviously it's preference. It's taste. That's why First Leaf exists to help curate your wine for your tastes they know which wines are good because it's you know they've got a a massive amount of reviews and rankings you you go into the app you rate describe the wine and so it's curating it based on your uh tastes with a one-of-a-kind algorithm and feedback to curate 
their wine recommendations. There's no guesswork, no misguided recommendations. It's really fantastic. And they work with the best winemakers in the world to get you great rates. So save time. Save money and, and save stress. Get stress out of your life with First Leaf, yeah. the wine club designed to keep you in mind. Join today. You'll get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. All right, number four, Lamar Jackson. Lamar. Finished a QB 10 last year. Dude. I think giving him the fourth spot is, you know, is nice. Calling for the bounce back. You didn't get booms last year. No, no booms. You know. Boom free zone. And that hurt because that was what he did the entire previous year. He always gave you weak winning performances. He, and he's fun to have as your fantasy quarterback, I mean, he, but last he, year stunk. He thankfully Until did. He yeah, I was going to say, end. he boomed at the very end of the year, which helps two things. One, it helped people a back get in boom. It helped get championships. Mike, I know you rode him to a championship. Yes. yes. We gallivanted down the meadows. It was great. Right. Tra not for me. Trading for Lamar mid <laughs> mid season was great because he wasn't that good the first half. But the other nice thing is that that end of season was reminiscent of his breakout campaign. It give, gives you a little bit of hope that like, okay, you know, th things are going to come together. Uh, Hollywood, another year older. They're obviously going to draft a, a wide yes, receiver. They will. Um, and, you know, uh, you have the knowledge of what can be. From Lamar Jackson with the rushing with the highest upside. And that's why I'm willing to to have him at four. You know, even though you know, you, you might think, Oh, well, what what happened last year to put him at ten? He he just he played to probably his average. He's not the best quarterback in the league. He was the MVP, took the league by storm, is the best rushing quarterback of all time, but he's not the best quarterback. In Six games outside the top 15 last year. That's as many as Cam Newton and Carson Wentz. Mike, your thoughts on Lamar? So it, it came down to the touchdown rate, which was uh, – that was kind of the thing we were we were bringing up last offseason of every uh, – 9% of Lamar Jackson's passing attempts turned into passing touchdowns, which is just an absurd number. When, when players hit that type of a threshold, we frequently see them – Dropped by two percent even more, and he he fell to a very nice six point nine percent. But it was not very nice for your fantasy team. Now let me let me ask you guys this question because I want to try and put some context in here. Our league of record, we have to put the three. We've talked about it. We keep three players, uh, but we have a lottery. So inside of the lottery, I can go with three top twenty four wide receivers with Calvin Ridley, uh, uh, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, or I can replace DJ Moore with Lamar Jackson and and spin the lotto wheel that way. How would you approach that uh, situation where would you be happier that you ended up with Lamar or would you be happier that you ended up with DJ Moore and one of the superstars? I would personally be much happier with the wide receivers. I mean, I think about okay. it in a draft. If I was in a draft, I would not draft Lamar Jackson – over those, over it's those players, a, yeah, and and you might be right, but I would go Lamar Jackson. But I'm I'm leaning that way because right now. I know you're getting another wide receiver. I know you have a top tier wide receiver with that other lottery pick, and so I think that the difference on your team and being a little bit uncertain about DJ Moore makes me think a little. You know, he's fringe QB uh, wide receiver too. Yeah, and that, you get a guaranteed top five. That, that's quarterback. where I am. Like my my think my thought process is. If the the wheel spins a, a direction and I get Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, yeah, you know, I'm like, yes, I'm very happy I got Keenan. But you know, the, the weighing the how frustrated you are to lose Calvin Ridley, and you got DJ Moore, who I, I love DJ Moore, but he's certainly not Calvin Ridley. Or, but this is emotional, maybe that, and that's what I'm talking about. Like that's that is because you want of, a title with Lamar. That your, is part of the fantasy football. Your game. franchise player is. Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook. So I guess the way that I see it is if I were to draft Dalvin Cook in the first round and I were to draft Calvin Ridley in the second round um, and, you know, the the third round comes around. As Keenan Allen. I No, it would be DJ Moore. It, yeah. Keenan Allen would be – you would not be part of the option. Right. So – and I had the chance to draft in that situation. My roster is currently Dalvin Cook and um, – Calvin da Ridley. Dalvin Cook and Calvin Ridley. If I had to draft Lamar or – DJ Moore, I would draft DJ Moore, personally. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, that All right. sounds like the right logic. So we're split. 
Yep. Yep. Leave it to the Foot Clan. I mean, I just want to give Lamar a chance to run it back. Possible. <laughs> Possible. Uh, Dak Prescott comes in at number five. I thought I'd have more support here, but I don't. You I, do. I have him at three. You do. Jason and Mike have him at five. Jason's shaking his head. I, I'm I'm shaking my head because I, I I'm madly in love with Dak Prescott. I think you having him number three makes me super happy. I I was worried that either one of you would have him very low. I, I can't put him above those other three guys who are known awesome commodities to me. Four because of the uh, sh sure. Um, yeah, because you have him at five. Right, because of the um, the injury. That's it. Like, if I knew he was perfectly healthy and finished the season, uh, I, I, would ha I would have no problem putting him up above Lamar Jackson. Lamari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup. You know, that's the argument. With uh, Zeke and a great offense. And? Blake the Jarwin. Yeah, yeah. Blake Jarwin, baby. <laughs> Took him a second. Yeah. I gave him the right answer, and he's like, wait. Uh yeah, I mean, he had the ankle injury. He'll be back. Great floor. Um, Awful I, defense still. Love yeah, it. I I just love the, I just love what I what I'm getting from Dak. So it, what's will be fascinating for. I basically Dak. ignored the injury here with this ranking. I do too. I I, I throw the injury out. I think he's going to be good to go. No problem. Uh, and you know, like the, the people listening right now, you know, you're you're far more in tune with fantasy football. You're more of a hardcore player. And you realize what Dak Prescott can bring to your team. But when it comes time for August and you're playing in your social leagues, your friends and family leagues, it will be fascinating to watch how far does Dak Prescott drop in fantasy football rankings and in, in the ADP of of players who aren't as plugged in as all of us. Because I think he will drop. I think that Dak Prescott can turn into someone – uh, in a casual league that you can grab in like the eighth round or later. If it, I could totally see that happening. If that's the case, he would be my number one target. I would rather get yes. Dak in the eighth or ninth than spend a fourth on Kyler, even yes. though I think Kyler's a better quarterback because I'm going to end up with a better roster at the end. What Dak was doing before he went down to injury was obviously unsustainable. Obviously, because if you know, I mean, those first four games were absurd. He was on pace for 67 100 yards, 36 uh, passing touchdowns, uh, adding another 12 rushing touchdowns. He was just – he was unbelievable every single week, week two, three, and four. He was, you know, the quarterback one on two different occasions. And it's the perfect combination with Dallas because you brought up all of the weapons. It's almost difficult for someone to not be good with those weapons and the terrible defense. I mean, that's what I look for in fantasy. I want my quarterback to have to win the game. Yeah, I'm giving him a complete injury-free pass. Putting him at three, keeping him on the trajectory he was showing at the beginning of last year, and seeing seeing how it goes with a, an emerging CD Lamb. Number six, Mark of the Aaron beast. Rodgers. He was six <laughs> for me, six for Jason, six for Mike. Uh, kind of had a good year. Forty two hundred yards, forty eight touchdowns, five picks, monster, three year. rushing touchdowns. Finished at QB three. Devonte Adams, Aaron Rodgers. That's all he needs. Are we being God forbid they add a weapon in the draft? Oh, never gonna happen. Um, are we being disrespectful here? No, we're being yeah fine. I, I don't think we are because you while Aaron Rodgers can is a high volume touchdown quarterback, he hit the nine point one percent of his attempts turned into touchdowns where he had been riding in the mid fours for the last couple yeah, years. Yeah, number one in points per game last year. It by was the just way. It, it was a research. It's not that if Rodgers is down in the in the mid fours, he's still fine for fantasy football. He's just, he's just he's not a league winning type three type of an yeah, option. Yeah, and, and we've seen this before with um oh Aaron Rodgers. Sure, uh, you know he had the year where he threw a nine percent touchdown rate back in twenty eleven and was unbelievable. That was twenty eleven, man. No, no, no. But my point that's is incredible. That that is incredible. My point is that's prime Aaron Rodgers, and even then. He he dropped several oh, percent okay. the next year. You're just not keeping that level of touchdown uh, positivity. And and if he's up there at five or six percent above the NFL average, which I would expect, he's still going to end up um, a mid quarterback one. He doesn't have the same rushing uh, volume, the rushing touchdowns that uh, these other top fantasy options. I mean, look at him the last two years prior. Right, he played yeah. 16 games both years. He was the quarterback seven, the quarterback ten. That's that's his range. 
if you're looking for a red flag for Aaron Rodgers, the efficiency numbers and the offensive line, they've lost their all pro center. Uh, I know uh, what Lindsay went to the Chargers, Chargers right? Yeah. Correct. And um, you know you're not going to have uh, David Bakhtiari back for Week One because he missed, uh, he tore his ACL and he missed six games, including the playoffs. So you could have a shaky offensive line situation to begin the year, especially if they're gelling new players on the offensive line. So a little bit of regression there. I feel like he's still going to drop in drafts further than maybe he should. So he's on he the might. he's on the list for me. Yeah, I'd be very happy with Rodgers if I could get him a little bit later. Next one's Russell Wilson, and then number eight is Jalen Hurts. Yeah, let's go, Jay. I'm just kidding. I just didn't want to talk about Russell Wilson. Oh, again, I thought you, you were didn't even notice me skip Russell Wilson. You entirely? were getting no, whatever. Russell Wilson. Let's get to the hotness. Let's talk about Jalen Hurts. All right, Russ finished at QB six last year, forty touchdowns, thirteen picks. What is this offense going to be? I feel like we're going to spend the entire offseason speculating on its pass run ratios. And, you know, was this the most disappointing 40 touchdown season for a quarterback in history? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, 16 different quarterbacks in history have thrown for 40 or more passing touchdowns. And he had the fewest passing yards per game, lowest yards per completion, and most sacks taken among that group. Yeah, I mean, and it was the tale of two halves. The first half of the year, if you drafted uh, Russell Wilson, you were literally number one in your league because he was unstoppable. And then they they changed up. They Go ran Hawks. the ball. They <laughs> ran the ball more, um, and he played worse. Like it wasn't just play calling. He was yeah, just, oh yeah. He started turning the ball over. Yeah, throwing interceptions, incompletes. But he 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 looked bad the second half of the year and number one in consistency for the first half 18 and for the second half well and the the funny thing is if you go back the last several years now he's been bad for consistency overall um you know it, it it's one of those things where uh, you know career wise he's obviously as consistent as it gets I don't think it, it's been since 2013 since he hasn't finished as a top 10 quarterback but on a weekly basis it's it's playing with fire with Russ. He's a quarterback that I am not excited to have on my roster. Not when you could have Jalen Hurts. Exactly. Yeah, baby. Somebody with just a long track record of spectacular play, much better than Russell Wilson. Yeah. Uh, Jalen. <laughs> it hurts, all right. All right, we've talked about Jalen Hurts this offseason. I have him at 12. You guys both have him at 7. Yeah. I thought I was being nice at 12, getting him into my top 12. QB1. You're being, QB a, you're being no. a hater. Yeah, it hurts. So no, I, I mean, we've seen very little of Jalen Hurts, and I know he's he made it, he made his mark. We've had these arguments, these discussions. Uh, first game out, it was great, gangbusters. Wasn't a great passer. What's the rushing totals really going to be? They went down every game that he played. So what's the truth? I don't know the truth. I'd rather have all these other guys over Jalen Hurts and where I think that this team's going. New head coach, new offensive coordinator. Who are the weapons? Are they going to draft another quarterback? So, so the, the question marks have him down at 12. And if it, you know, we say stay water on this show, right? We want to change our opinions as new information comes. And if he becomes more secure and the team looks like it's in a little bit better shape, I mean, the old line's great, then maybe his ranking changes for me. The, the weapons on the team are his left and right leg. That's right. Those like, are the, those are best the weapons. two weapons. Yeah, absolutely. Last year, once he took over, on pace for 184 rushing attempts, almost 1,100 rushing yards, and 12 rushing touchdowns. That's that's all I need to hear about. That's all I care about. You give me some uh, some passing work on top of that to put a little cherry on the top. Then then he's he's going to be great. Yeah, if you're if I mean, there's just not a lot of quarterbacks in the history of the game that can reach a thousand rushing yards. That's not to say he will. Um, but you know, if, if you, if he's 800 plus rushing yards, he's going to be a quarterback one. There's just no way that that doesn't happen. Um, obviously we've got to get through the NFL draft, make sure that, you know, a, a quarterback didn't fall there that replaces him, but you know, they could, they could walk away here with Jalen Waddle or, uh, Waddle, Devontae Waddle. Smith and add to his capabilities. Yeah. And I just don't know what it is yet. So I'm, I'm taking a more reserved approach with with uh, Mr. Hertz. Justin Herbert at nine and Ryan Tannehill at 10. I have Herbert at eight. Jason has him at nine, Mike at 11. Uh, he's got a new head coach, new offensive coordinator as well. No Hunter Henry this year. 
Are you expecting a sophomore slump from Justin Herbert, Mike? Not a slump, but there's just there's enough things that have changed with uh, Justin Herbert for me to not just say, oh, well, you know, breaking the he broke the rookie record for touchdowns. Justin Herbert is he's locked in. He's going to be a top uh, whatever top ten quarterback. So I, I have him just on the outside of that as uh, with all the variables of of coaching changing and the team getting better. Uh, of on the defensive side of the ball, lowering your your point uh, output if you don't have to catch up. So I just I have him a couple spots behind you guys. Last year he was game script proof, according to this stat. Completed sixty six percent of his passes, whether this situation was leading, tied, or trailing. Um, has weapons, you know Eckler, Keenan Allen, and company. I do like that they're fixing the line. I th- they're in a tough division. You know it's one of those things where I think they're still going to be a pretty bad team record wise, regardless of them maybe fixing the defense. It's been a while since Jerwin James has been out there. You know, it's nice mm-hmm. to say, okay, you get these weapons back, but there's nothing to say that he's going to be the same player. or These other guys are going to be able to stop Patrick Mahomes and, uh, you know, tough division. So yeah. I like Justin Herbert, but I think it's going to be more of the same, which is probably eight, nine, 10 range. Yeah, I, I mean, what you saw at the, the very end of the season wasn't as great as the beginning. The last six games, he was outside the top 12 quarterbacks in, in a points-per-game basis, and which is fine for a rookie. He was unbelievable, and I think he passed everybody's eyeball test. He's legit. He's a great quarterback. He's going to succeed. I think he's going to be one of the more polarizing players in fantasy because people want to project, does he take that massive step forward? In which case, like I've, I've been on other shows where the, he is the guy that's taking that Lamar Jackson leap forward. He's taking the Kyler or the Josh Allen leap forward. And I can, I can, I can see that path. I don't believe that path happens. Uh, though the aforementioned huge leap forward second year players have usually been run first quarterbacks like Lamar, Kyler, and Josh Allen. Um, and you know, in addition to that, you you've got is that the difference for you between Herbert and Hertz? Yes, exactly. It's just the rushing. It's just the, the rushing. rushing prowess because obviously we saw a lot more of Herbert than we did Hertz. And you you saw you know you brought up and and it's it's accurate in the f- tiny four game sample, but Hertz rushed the ball a little bit less every single game. But this that that happened in a pretty drastic way for Justin Herbert. At the beginning of the year, he was running a lot. The better he got at knowing the offense, running the offense, um, he he rushed less. And I think that's that's what they want. They don't want Herbert to go out and you know run for five hundred, six hundred yards. They would love for him to always be able to complete everything from the pocket. And is he going to put up another five rushing touchdowns? That seems like a high number for the amount of attempts that he should project to see. Ryan Tannehill's at 10. Mike's the highest. He has him at nine. Seven rushing touchdowns for him last year. QB7 mm. finish. So we all have him a little bit lower. I don't know why. It's just... <laughs> I know he's, why. He's hard to believe in. It's, you know, what if his name he wasn't is. Ryan Tannehill? I think it's a, it's a fine like name. Like Ryan Fireball. If you, <laughs> Ryan Fireball. Well, I just mean something a little bit more. Like we is have, he an American he gladiator? Needs a, he needs a rebranding. <laughs> Because Ryan Tannehill wears the stink of his early days, and it, and that stink hurts his if he was our fireball here. Ryan Fireball. Well, I didn't think a long time about that one. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, if it's you not Smash Jackson, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. If you take his name out of the equation and the stink out of the equation, you just look at quarterback yes. X. Yes. And you say, well, quarterback X is not throwing for four thousand yards. Quarterback X has lost a ton of his. Uh, options uh, as far as targets, John U. Smith, Corey Davis. Well, uh, now I know who it is, Jason. Yeah, what a nice hint. Uh, <laughs> who could it be? There is, there's, there's worry here because the efficiency of Ryan Tannehill has been outstanding. The efficiency of the Tennessee Titans has been otherworldly. They get in the red zone. We were talking about this last year, about how like you, they just can't stay that efficient. Well, guess what they did? But they can't stay that efficient. It, 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 they lost their offensive coordinator. That's a big change. Targets have left. And if, uh, you know, I've said this before, but if either A.J. Brown or Derrick Henry goes down with an injury, which there's a good chance that they miss some part of the season, I don't know what this team – I mean, it's just – it's very, very shallow. So Tannehill, I think, has huge upside. We've seen it many times. A great streaming option. 
Um, I just don't want to rely on uh, him. I, and that I think that's the point. If a top option went down for Patrick Mahomes or for Aaron Rodgers, we wouldn't care. Right. He'd, if, if, if they go down for Ryan Tannehill, it's like, oh, he can't do it. When Devontae Even Adams, though he's been just as efficient and as effective as those guys because we just don't believe he's the one doing it. Right. He's not. It's the other guys. But but is that is that fair? No, but it's true. T uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even feel good defending him, but it's the truth. <laughs> Tom Brady at 11, Matthew Stafford at 12. We'll round it out there. Jason the lowest on Brady, Jason the lowest on Stafford. Uh Jason the hater. Seriously. Tom Brady more of the same. I you know, they brought back 22 starters. Bruce Arians is going to keep throwing the ball. There's the chance that he's more comfortable in this offense. Uh, and maybe that makes up for the age becoming one year older, if that's even what happens to Tom Brady. <laughs> Evans and Godwin still back. Is he aged like half a year? Yeah, maybe. When you're on a plant only diet. Yeah. I don't. I'm not convinced that he's not is like he actually is going. Is he a backwards. leap year baby? I think Ooh. he. I think he might be getting younger. <laughs> you know, if there's, most compelling argument to eat plants is Tom Brady. That's ever been. Yeah. Because he keeps eating plans and he keeps winning Super Bowls. And looking good, too. Yeah. I mean, it's apparently regrown hair. It's uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Take that, Brady! <laughs> we all see it! <laughs> I need plants. I think, you see <laughs> yeah, it. I think you see it a little more than everybody else. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Is that, is that the key? No. Oh, what if it was? Then plant, I would eat what, plants. Pl no, 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 plants only. <laughs> You we you're you're on record as being a meat eater. You love it. You, yeah. You have more grills than you should. Um, plants the rest of your life, but your hair grows back. How much? I want to know how much your hair matters. And to one you. one bite, one bite of a burger, and it's it's oh, over. It's your gone. hair just starts all of it's gone. I'll, I'll shave it right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm not <laughs> look. Uh, you don't okay. have. You can keep the hair you have right now for this deal. Yeah, but I mean, I might as well just move on and <laughs> order some Omaha steaks. Okay. <laughs> Matthew Stafford. I feel like we has been not talked about a lot. It's it's Why? tough. Changing teams uh, multiple years in a row now where injuries have derailed it. You're talking like back injuries. Uh, Check this out. He's the fourth, fourth highest odds of MVP behind Mahomes, Rodgers, Josh Allen, and then he's what? tied he's tied with Brady. It makes sense to me because the he's, team he's, can he's, take a leap forward. Exactly. He's on a great team. And if – they end up winning a lot of games, being one of the best, you know, two or three records in the NFL. He will get the credit because he's the quarterback and he's new and he's different. So I understand that on the uh, on the Vegas side. Stafford is great. I mean, Stafford's always been a fun fantasy option. But, you know, I mean, you look at the last eight years, he's pretty much never been an elite fantasy option. Even when he's had good weapons, he's an elite option for certain weeks. He's and had stretches. Yeah, absolutely. Stretches of absolute fire. Um, but it, it's one of those things where this is a team that's really, really good at running the ball as well. Um, I think that Cam Akers is going to score a lot of touchdowns this year, and it's similar to what you saw with, with Jared Goff, where he could have really, really big – he could have a game with 300 uh, passing yards and, and just no – 300 passing, touchdowns. And no passing touchdowns because they were all rushed in. I could see that – Still staying true with Stafford. All right, before we close out, I want to do some Dynasty talk. Dynasty download. Wait, did the hat get smaller? What you almost missed it. I, oh, yeah, you I'm almost need missed to see the drive. that again. Do you, you want me to hit one more yeah. time? Yeah, go one more. Because we always update it. Yeah. <laughs> Dynasty download. <laughs> and, then, and then when I'm supposed to leave the screen, my head is just too large. It's st it's stuck on the screen. It's stuck. Well, and there were there were quite a few Antonio Gibsons on the screen, which is what today's Dynasty Download segment is about. Antonio Gibson, trade for, trade away, or hold. Oh yeah. We just had a mock draft with our writers, and Mr. Antonio Gibson made the first round. It was the twelfth pick of the draft. Um he's one of the fantasy hitman's trade targets. Oh, he's my champion. In the Dynasty Pass. Do we agree? That is the question posed. Do, does Jason and myself agree that he is a trade target in Dynasty? Yeah, I, I fully think he is. And and while he's going to be difficult to acquire, whoever drafted Gibson was very happy with what they had, and they can they could see that he's got uh you know a, a great path forward. Um, 
Second round pick in dynasty startups right now over the last 30 days. Oof. I, I, wow. am, I am definitely willing. I, I said this to Mike early yeah. in this offseason. I was so angry when I looked at my league because I wanted to go after Gibson and I was willing to pay up. You know, if I'm I've got CD Lamb and I'm ready to, you know, make a deal, uh, look at something with with Gibson, because I, I really believe that he's um, going to be awesome this year. He's super young, uh, very talented. And then I realized that Antonio Gibson was on Mike's team and mm -hmm. I, I don't need to make an offer. I think I'm a hold or trade away for Antonio Gibson. OK, um, I think the evidence that I would put forth there is simply the fact that Look, I know that the Washington football team social media account really likes Antonio Gibson. There's a lot of pretty pro Antonio Gibson tweets coming out there from Washington football team. Yeah, because of all the highlights. Yeah, because he's very good. He's yeah. a very good player. But I also believe that this team fundamentally wants to use multiple players in the backfield and that that may limit the, dy the dynasty and fantasy output for Antonio Gibson over time. Now, if they don't, grab anybody in the draft sure that's another feather in the cap of antonio gibson's dynasty value but i think last year you know you you saw a lot of i guess i would say high trust situations where antonio gibson wasn't yet there and we'll see if he earns those spots this year that, that's what's going to come down to so that's why i'm more of a hold than i am a trade for because i'm not sure that this team wants to do what we want them to do yeah does it, that make sense yeah it's a projection um uh, gibson Hasn't really done it yet. He showed flashes. He was on his way. He got injured at the end of the year. And so you have to just say, do you think this becomes his backfield? Do you think, like Andy just said, that you believe it's going to be a split backfield? And I am, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to, if, if he breaks out this year the way that I think he's going to, he's you're not going to be able to get him. It's, it's over. And so that's really what it comes down to. You have to decide what you believe in Antonio Gibson. I think he takes over as a darn near bell cow this year and the the what's helpful for when if you believe in Antonio Gibson and you're trading for him I should say just a, a point in his favor is this isn't a situation like back when uh when Jordan Howard broke out now Jordan Howard I think was a fourth round pick but you saw the rushing ability and then we would spend off seasons going they're going to get him involved in the passing game. Can he do it? it? If that opportunity shows up, will Jordan Howard be there to answer that? And the answer was no. Antonio Gibson was played frequently as a wide receiver in college. The guy has elite level hands. And so if he is called upon for that part of the game, will he succeed? 100% he will. He is, he is ready to do it. That is... I think if you are making a trade for Antonio Gibson, that's what you're saying is I believe they will use him more in the passing exactly. game. And if you're going to trade him away, you say they'll just keep him on, on the ones and the twos and they'll keep using players like J.D. McKissick on third down. Yeah, I, and I, I think they won't use him enough. I think that's the, the hard part. Well, they part. won't because I'm, I'm petitioning for every play. I mean, last year he was on 900 rushing yard pace. He was on a 40 reception pace. And we forty is nice though. You have to see it increase for him to to pay off on a first round trade value, and um, and that's the bet, right? That's the projection. Yeah, you're you're betting on the team being good, and then them trusting him in higher value situations, and not putting J D. McKissick out there, um, or not share, you know, not drafting drafting Travis Etienne in the first round. Right, and he just he keeps overcoming the odds throughout his entire career. Of once it got into the pros, you could. I mean, people made the argument, and it was it was kind of a harder one to to counter with like statistics and things. Like Antonio Gibson in college carried the ball like fifty times total. How is that guy going to turn into a full time running back? And you say because he is actually a good player. He is he is capable of doing that, and immediately he did that. So I I believe that just the next step is inevitable. A any injury history in college? No. Do you remember? Not not that okay. I'm aware of. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting today's show. There's a Diggs helmet right now, $21 up on the website. Jerry Rice, full-sized, authentic, on-field Matt White speed helmet, $60 right now up on PristineAuction.com. Where, code, did, where did we win the Devontae Adams and uh, Clyde, Clyde Edwards Allaire. Allaire jerseys we're giving away? Uh, that would be Pristine Auction. <sighs> I'll bet we and used don't Ballers. Don't tell everyone our well, we, didn't, we didn't use the code Ballers because we'd already done that. Mm, we should have. Yeah, and then, you know. <laughs> We did a long time ago. 
but they can use it if it's their first time, pristineauction.com. And a reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com if you want in on that ultimate draft giveaway. That's going to do it. By the time you hear from us again, draft predictions, draft day is coming. Put on your draft day pants, Jason. I just want to know if it's football time. Oh, very soon, Jason. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.